Neurons are the building blocks of your mind. It's where all of your learning happens, but even your moods and your emotions. So let's look at a neuron. A neuron is actually a one-celled data processor. And what looks like hair at the top are uh, tiny fibers called dendrites. They receive data from up to 10,000 other neurons. That data is transferred to the cell body. And when a certain threshold of data is passed, the cell body launches or fires an electrical spike down the long fiber called the axon to the axon tips. And from there, the information is passed on to other neurons. The yellow globs are a fatty sheath called myelin that serve as sort of electrical insulation. Each neuron is really complex, even though it's one cell, it has up to two trillion very active molecules. Each one is as complex as a city. Wow. Well, the structure of the nervous system was first identified by Santiago Ramón y Cajal, a Spanish scientist, and he was awarded the Nobel Prize for his work in 1906. Uh, because of his medical and artistic training, uh, he was able to use the most powerful microscopes in the day and create these perfectly accurate and, and detailed drawings of neurons and how they connect better than anyone had ever done before. Uh, the black stain that was used to make the neurons and their fibers stand out are what sort of is all over his lab and his lab coat. It's not a, a dirty area, it's just because it's all stained with the lab stuff. The neurons you have now and that you have until your death were mostly present in your brain at birth. Some are grow as in an infant, and you can see on the left, uh, at birth, the light green neurons are young neurons, still growing. Uh, but by age 13, there are hardly any. By middle age, forget it. Uh, so you, in general, don't grow new neurons over your lifetime. In fact, you lose about 30,000 per year, just by na they natural, naturally die. Uh, used to be thought that that was the purpose, that was the cause of dementia, but you have a hundred billion of them, so you can afford to lose that many. Uh, but 80% of your neurons are not for thinking, but they're in the base of, of your brain, that, that plum-sized module called the cerebellum. Uh, and that does things like the, the tasks you don't have to think about, like riding a bicycle and, and breathing. Uh, what is lost, though, are your synapses. Uh, so synapses are where neurons meet, and you have the greatest number of them for, of your whole life, about age three. Uh, within about eight years, 50% uh, of those are destroyed by the brain uh, because they're not used. Wow. So the synapse where learning occurs was first identified as not a connection between neurons, but actually a very, but, but a gap where they're very, very close together, uh, identified by Dr. Neuron. Uh, so the electrical spike doesn't go from one to the other. At the, the axon tip, the electrical spike releases neurotransmitter chemicals. And it's those, mo those chemical molecules that move across the gap to pass the information on to the next neurons. N neurotransmitters, you can think of as the, the expression of the neuron's spike, what it wants to communicate. Those neurotransmitters are one of about 25 different protein molecules. Here's, here's dopamine, and you can see the atoms making it up, little globules. Uh, so five of these, and they're really oversimplified roles, are noradrenaline, which is associated, associated with your levels of anxiety, cognitive control, uh, if something bad happens to you, how that is encoded or not encoded in your memory. Dopamine is the happy molecule. Uh, you feel that as a reward. Um, you feel positive reinforcement. It makes you happy when you get it. Your, your mood is, is elevated. You just feel good. You want, you want to feel that again. Uh, so do, dopamine is actually associated with addiction as well, but every pleasurable thing you've ever had. Uh, it's associated with sexual arousal, with orgasm, for example. Histamine is uh, associated with learning and memory. Serotonin is most often associated with sleep, but also uh, mood. And uh, many of the molecules are associated with mood regulation. It's interesting to think how much 
of, of your mood and your emotion is governed by the specific neurotransmitters that are released or not. Acetylcholine, also mood, but also involved in learning, motivation, and short-term memory. So if these neurotransmitters are out of balance, then certain disorders are associated with that lack of balance. Uh, too much, too little uh, of a neurotransmitter or a mix of, of wrong balance. For adults, this is associated with Parkinson's disease, addiction, schizophrenia, multiple sclerosis. But even for kids, uh, it's associated, associated with ADHD, depression, and autism. So these are very powerful uh, neurotrans, very powerful effect, effects of neurons and their neurotransmitters. Uh, treatments for these disorders are often designed to adjust the levels of neurotransmitters in your brain. So uh, to counteract depression, for example, maybe, um, maybe dopamine would be increased. Neurons are a huge evolutionary success story. It seems that they evolved like once, maybe 700 million years ago, and they haven't changed a whole lot since then. They're similar across the animal kingdom. Squid neurons, for example, have been used to study how neurons work from Dr. Neuron's day till close to the present time uh, because they work the same, very similarly. Uh, the neurons, of course, don't even know that you exist. Uh, you have 100 billion of them. Your family dog and the squid have about 500 million. A rat has about half of that number. The neurotransmitters seem to have similar effects, though. So uh, if dopamine reception is inhibited in a bee's brain, it's unable to learn its way back to its hive. Uh, the drug ecstasy in humans makes us super sociable. Guess what? If ecstasy is given to a solitary squid species, it makes it more sociable. Wow. Uh, so uh, simple, simple sea creatures are still used to study uh, neuron effects. The Tritonia sea slug has only 8,000 neurons. It's 100,000 times simpler than a squid, but uh, it's simple enough to, to actually study things like how neurons and synapses uh, create long-term memories. Uh, these 8,000 neurons are clustered in about eight modules in the, the Tritonia's brain. You see that in the middle, in the middle image. And uh, They've been encoded in silicon to create an educational robot where kids program these eight modules uh, to generate behavior of the robot to see how a brain might be programmed. Pretty cool. Uh, so neurons not only govern our learning, but also moods and emotions. Uh, they've been relatively recently studied. So the average, you know, in our, our own education, we haven't been taught much about them. It's all kind of new. Uh, the neurotransmitter chemicals are what moderate much of our behavior, and the synapses are where all learning occurs uh, in the squid and in your pets, in you and in your students.